Hi, this is Brass Check, and um, we don't typically ask people to um, sign petitions or file comments, and um, I don't know why we don't. I guess we've got so many other things to do uh, that we don't do that one thing. Uh, however, sometimes things are so outrageous and so unbelievable uh, that we're just compelled to ask you to look at this. Um, Long story short, ICE, Immigration Customs Enforcement, uh, I think that's what it stands for, um, wants to destroy all its records <laughs> of, of people who have died in custody, been sexually abused in custody, uh, physically abused, uh, put in solitary confinement, tortured. They just want to take all those records and make them disappear. Um, Number one, I can't believe that this is even proposed. Number two, I can't believe it's on track to happen. And number three, I can't believe that all the public commentary necessary to kill this thing now hasn't already happened. So uh, we're going to get involved and ask you to, to, to look into this, make up your own mind. Um, and I'll tell you what I'm doing. I'm, I put in a public comment uh, saying absolutely not. Um, so anyway, let me read the petition. This comes from the ACLU. And it says that, uh, oh, by the way, this has already happened. <laughs> so we're trying to get it, the approval's already been given. Uh, we're just trying to get it reversed. So here's the statement. I'm concerned that NARA, and I, I, I don't know who that is, that's a government agency, has granted ICE, Immigration uh, Customs Enforcement, permission to destroy records of death, sexual abuse, solitary confinement, and other abuses in custody. These records are critical for finding ICE and its agents accountable for abuses past and future and are vitally important part of the historical record. The thousands of disturbing complaints of sexual assault, excessive solitary confinement, and death in custody will go unpunished and there will be no justice done. If you allow ICE to destroy these records on the timelines described in ICE's proposal, some of the destruction timelines are so short they could allow documents to be destroyed before a lawsuit is even filed. Additionally, giving ICE permission to destroy these records will erase the historical record and enable the Trump administration to whitewash its abuses for future historians. If you have, so let me just, in case that went by as a blur, um, basically ICE kills people. ICE sexually abuses people. Uh, ICE engages in all kinds of uh, heinous, heinous criminal activity, uh, and the, they would like all that, all the records of that to go away. Um, you may say, Ken, this is uh, this is extreme. This can't possibly be happening. Well, anybody that's crossed into the border into the United States more than half a dozen times, I'm sure, has been abused. Uh, and, and we're talking about American citizens, by the way. We're not talking about, you know, a, a guy in a, in a, in a, in a burqa, or a woman in a burqa, you know, with a bomb strapped to her, you know, obviously. Um, we're, we're talking about just a regular man, woman, or child uh, trying to get back into this country from being overseas. You will be treated rudely. Um, you will be spoken to rudely. Uh, and here's the problem. When you're at that border point, there is no law. There is no uh, constitutional law. You're asking to get into the country, and they get to do pretty much anything they want to. Now, and you know, having your car pulled over, uh, this has happened to me coming back from Canada, having my car you know, turned upside down for no reason, just because they had nothing else to do that day. Um, I was on a bus coming from Montreal. We were held in, in sequestration. Uh, for three and a half hours. No reason. They just didn't feel like looking at our p passports. So we sat on the bus. We asked for help. We were told to shut up. Uh, we waited longer. Finally, somebody took pity on us, and uh, someone came and started the process. And 45 minutes later, our six passports, because there were only six of us on the bus, got a chance to look. Got a chance, you know, someone looked at our passports, and we came through. Um, the bus and train service that services basically the Adirondack region of New York State 
all comes out of Montreal, the Amtraks and the buses, because it's, you know, it's a big route, and there's a lot of little towns in the Adirondacks. The people in that region don't ever count on the bus or train arriving on time within an hour or two or three because of the, of the incompetence and the abusiveness of the ICE personnel at the Canadian border. And that's Americans coming home. Okay, I have, I have a friend, he's Russian, and he's been in this country since the early 90s, and he, has, he had all his paperwork, it was all the I's were dotted and T's were crossed, he'd been here for years, a productive citizen, had a little business, cleaning houses with his wife. Um, one day he went to do his office visit, by the way, he's now a citizen, but anyway, he, this was before that happened, he went to do his office visit, and somebody got the paperwork mixed up. So they handcuffed him to a radiator for eight hours. Didn't let him call anybody. And then put him on a bus to a jail, an immigration jail in uh, Los Angeles. That's a long bus ride. Uh, and then transferred him to a, a prison, I believe it was in Tucson, somewhere in Arizona, where he stayed for six months. He hadn't done anything wrong at all. They had gotten some paperwork thing mixed up. And he spent six months in prison, and when they let him out, they literally put him out on the street in Arizona with the clothes on his back and no, no assistance at all. Uh, I can think of a story of a couple, um, older middle-aged couple in their 60s uh, that used, from Scotland that used to love to come to the U.S. and go to Nashville and go to Austin and go to New Orleans. and just They loved American music, and that's what they did. They took a side trip to Canada. They came back into the U.S. Something wasn't stamped correctly. They were arrested and they were imprisoned. And I think she got out in two weeks. He got out in six weeks over nothing. And the reason that happened to them is they're not U.S. citizens. So if you're not a U.S. citizen and you're in this country uh, and ICE decides they want to mess with you, you're in a world of hurt. And it, it gets much worse than the stories that I've told. People have died in custody. We're not, and we're not talking about criminals. We're not talking about, we're talking about just people that just don't happen to be citizens. They're here on vacation. They're here legally. Okay, maybe, maybe some of them have overstayed their visas. Okay, you don't deserve to die uh, for overstating, overstaying your visa. So anyway, the idea that ICE wants to destroy all the records of detainees who have died, been physically or sexually abused, or put in excessive solitary confinement. I mean, this is outrageous. So the links below, uh, I made my case. Um, look into it for yourself. Uh, but th this, this, is, this is a line we have, to, we have to draw a line in the sand here. And by the way, ICE, ICE was like this before 9-11. I remember taking the train from Montreal back to New York once stopped at the border. We were stopped at the border for an hour and a half. Um, these guys came in in black jumpsuits with German shepherds and just terrorized everyone that didn't have a U.S. passport. And again, this is, this is pre-9-11. There was, there was, you, couldn't, you, couldn't you couldn't attribute it to, to hysteria. Um, this is the way these guys are. They're dangerous. They're out of control. And now they want to kill the paper trail of, of their criminal behavior. So I say we have to stop it. And um, the link is, is below.